How's it going guys? So it looks like I'm back with the graphic novel haul for uh, September, October. So I'll try to get through this as quick as I can so I don't waste that much of your time. So let's start with the bigger books that I picked up. And uh, these are actually on my TBR. First up, I have Beowulf by Santiago Garcia and David Rubin. This thing is pretty enormous. I think it's the trim size of a, probably a dark horse uh, hardcover. And I believe this is a reprint of uh, an early work that Ruben did with uh, Santiago Garcia. It's translated by Sam Stone and Joe Keating. I hope it's a good translation. I've never heard of Image doing anything uh, like this before, but I think uh, they did it because Ruben is doing a rumble right now. It's a great way to experience Ruben's art with the size that it has. So Beowulf, I'm sure we're all kind of familiar with the story. That's the first book up. Another pretty large uh, book here. This is a uh, Tyler Cross by Nuri and Bruno. Black Rock. This is from uh, Titan Comics Hard Case Crimes release. And I pretty much picked it up because of uh, Bruno. I really enjoyed his work on uh, Nemo, which you have here. But of course, Nemo was written and drawn by Bruno. Although I have read stuff by, uh, by what's his name? By Nudie. I did re read uh, Death of the Star, but he's also done Death of Stalin. And uh, Tyler Cross, if you can read that, is basically a crime noir, mobster gangster series. I'm uh, excited to get into it. I believe there's a couple volumes uh, or a couple albums out. Or at least the second one is coming out. I'm not sure when. But I have not read uh, Tyler Cross yet. It's on the uh, TBR. Another title on my TBR. We'll go with some uh, Dark Horse here. This is Giants. Just basically just picked up these titles, so this is by by the Valderrama brothers. Valderrama. I heard some good things about Giants. I believe the Chinista really enjoyed this title. It's basically post apocalyptic mix with kaiju and so forth. And uh, the art the art is pretty interesting. I didn't like the art when I saw the uh, single issues uh, coming out. Let's go with some more Dark Horse. This is Jenny Finn, of course, uh, by Mr. Mike Magnola and Troy Nixie and uh, Pharrell Del Rimp, Del Rimp, Del Rimple. I believe he does the, the he does the last issue in the series. For some reason, Nixie couldn't couldn't finish it, and uh, this thing was creepy, bizarre, a lot of fun. It feels like a Magnolia book, but it started it started off uh, a lot more odd than uh, a Magnolia book usually does, uh, <laughs> and it basically revolves around this girl who. Uh, is living in a in the Victorian period, a portside town, and there's a bunch of murders going on. Men turn into these weird, bizarre creatures, and uh, a lot of prostitutes are going missing. But by the end, you get all these weird uh, characters, which felt very much like a Magnolia book, and uh, it was pretty fun. If you like your creepy, bizarre books. 
Uh, Jenny Finn is is a good one. We'll go with more Dark Horse here. This one I picked up at, at a local con. Good thing uh, Mr. Big Elbow reminded me it was a local uh, con that I decided to go ahead and have a look, see what they had. And I got a couple trades. This one is uh, Sin City, of course, by Frank Miller. And I believe this is kind of a pilot graphic novel for Sin City. So he did a, a couple of uh, chapters, I'm guessing, for Dark Horse Presents before he actually started the Sin City series. And uh, well, I'm sure we're all familiar with uh, Frank Miller's art, the black and white style that he used for this series. It was interesting. Um, there is a chapter here where his, his style kind of changed. And uh, I don't know, it felt very different. Instead of going from the black, white, where the characters would fade into the background, he kind of does more outlines on them. They feel a lot more realistic. I don't know why he changed it. But by the end, he goes back to the basic back and white style without aligning the figures. It was interesting. I don't know if I would continue the series. The That one basically is a one and done. So the story ends. But I'm sure he reuses the characters for um, of the continuation of the series, if that makes sense. And here's another one I picked up at that con. This is Wool. Hugh Howie, Howie's Wool. I'm guessing it's um, this adapts a book or something by Hugh Howie. And it's uh, scripted by Justin Gray and Jim Palmiotti, which of course has done a lot of uh, Marvel Knights and Ash, of course. And it has art by Jim Broxton, which I thought was pretty cool. It was interesting. This story reminds me a lot of uh, Snowpiercer, in a way. Because uh, you basically have these giant uh, silos or shafts where people have gone to live now. So there's, I believe, probably hundreds of levels. And the lower you go down, the worse people are. So you get to like engineering and there's this whole uh, thing about we can't go up out into the surface because of course the atmosphere isn't any good and it's a good mystery. The first couple chapters went kind of uh, by a little too oddly. The pacing wasn't very good. The panel layouts were kind of odd. But by the end I thought it was it was a pretty good story. Uh, and the last one I picked up at the con, if I didn't mention it, uh, base one and uh, this one were like five bucks. So five bucks for a graphic novel. I thought it was pretty good. This is Destroyer, of course, by Kirkman. It's a Marvel Max. And I had no clue who Destroyer was. Did I say Robert Kirkman? Yeah, Robert Kirkman. Art by uh, Corey Walker, which I thought was pretty good. And... Uh, what is a destroyer? It's basically a superhero has a, just found out he has some kind of terminal disease and he goes all out to try and uh, get revenge on whoever's left, whoever's going to come after him, so on and so forth. So it was pretty interesting. It was pretty cool. It's kind of what I wanted uh old man Hawkeye to be in a way <laughs> you know if you're gonna go all out just go all out and the ending was very very satisfying it had a very nice ending I have no idea how Destroyer works into the Marvel Universe uh, I don't think I saw any any familiar character pop up with him if uh, Kirkman just did it as a standalone or what but I would say check out Destroyer. It was pretty good. I'll continue with another Dark Horse title that I wasn't planning on buying but I wanted to read. This is John Byrne's Next Men book one and from what I researched I think there was 
maybe three book collections in this series i'm not sure dark horse printed these these first ones and then somehow it jumped over to idw i think and like i said i've always wanted to check out next man but wasn't sure i wanted to buy it the art of course by burn is a very 80s 90s style i enjoyed it a lot the story it's not the typical superhero story as you would think i thought that that's what next one next one next men would be but it starts off kind of like a very hardcore sci-fi time travel story and then from there on it develops into the whole next men and how they came about and by the end you get the the next men of course <laughs> why don't i move on to some uh dc now, i have a uh, batwoman volume one hydrology this is the new 52 i had no idea that bat, bat that Batwoman started in uh, New 52. It is written by J.H. Williams III, or drawn by J.H. Williams III, I think. And uh, written by by Hayden Blackman. Oh, I guess it's written by both. So, and an uh, odd thing happened that when I read J.H. Williams III, I thought it was Freddie Williams III, the guy that does a lot of uh, Batman TMNT crossovers. <laughs> So by the time I checked out the art, I was like, wow, his art is very different here. And no, it's a completely different guy. And I can't say I was a big fan of Williams' art here, of J.H. Williams' art. He does this this odd thing where uh, where he's doing Batgirl, or Bat, sorry, Batwoman. And he does a completely different style. But when he does uh, her... Uh, Without the costume, he uses a different style. And uh, I can't say I was a fan of his panel layouts. They're just all over the place. I'm, I can follow the story. I mean, like, what's that diagonal for? What was the purpose of... I don't know. See the different style he uses for, for the characters and everything. So... I, I can't say I enjoyed this. I like the whole story of how we get to see how, you know, Batwoman comes about and sort of ties into uh, Batman. And he's kind of following her around and stuff. And that was kind of interesting. But Williams did not attract me with his art. It was... Here's a last DC title I picked up, I think. Yeah. This is the new... The Silencer by uh, John Romita Jr. And interesting enough, Victor Bogdano Bogdanovich and Dan Abnett. So Bogdanovich does like the second half, but um, The Silencer was credited credit, credited to uh, Romita Jr. as the creator, I guess. Kind of the creator. So I was interested to check out the book because of him and of course because of Bogdanovich so you know he's like the little Greg Capullo <laughs> in my opinion I, I really like his art he was very good at uh, New Superman which he does a little homage there <laughs> and it was interesting I mean it's kind of like the Punisher like people would be saying this was kind of the Punisher DC take on the Punisher Sort of, kind of. Hey, let's move on to Boom. This is the only Boom title I picked up way back when in September. This is Judas by Jeff Loveness and Jacob Rebelka. Rebelk. Uh, the art, of course, by Rebelk was very interesting. I can't say I cared much for the story. It was kind of kind of an interesting story where Judas goes into hell and then he's supposed to do something and something else and like I said the art is a big draw for for this title. Uh 
Wow, this is one of my current reads. This is We Can Never Go Home by Matthew Rosenberg is writing and Patrick Kingley, I think. The art, Josh Hood, Brian Laval. And I believe this was a book that they did before Four Kids Walk Into a Bank, which I really enjoyed. Um, about uh, chapter four, so two more, two more chapters to go. It's interesting. It's not as good as Four Kids Walk Into a Bank. I, I think you could tell how their uh, storytelling and art progressed. It's interesting. It's fun. I like the whole we're getting powers. What do we do with them? Uh, so speaking of uh, we have powers now, what do we do? I have a Generation Gone, Volume 1 by Alex Cott and Andres Lima Araujo, which uh, I am a fan of uh, Araujo. He does some uh, cool stuff. If you haven't read his Man Plus series, I would say check it out. Over Generation Gone. <laughs> It says volume one. I don't know if it'll get a volume two. Uh, the first chapter in the book is very long. It's very winded. There's a lot of setup for these characters who are basically a bunch of hackers, these three. And uh, they get into the wrong stuff and they get powers. I wasn't that invested in them. Uh, they're kind of compelling. They're kind of not. The girls mother has a uh, cancer I think they kind of seem a little whiny and a little I don't know but the last basically second to last chapter it got interesting that's when everything that's when the action started and by that time I don't think I was that excited for the book I don't know if you want to check it out go ahead I would I would say comparing that to Mark Miller's MPH Mark Millar's is just way over over to the top over this one and then of course you get some uh what's his name uh, who did the art for mph duncan duncan fagredo what's his name uh this guy fagredo he has some interesting art so he has some pretty cool art of course this is a this is something else uh, mph over generation gone heck even uh we can never go home is is a much more interesting uh, coming to power story <laughs> I, w I was gonna say it's like a a little uh knockoff of akira but that would sound terrible <laughs> is that like a new uh genre now is it coming to we're coming into powers and now what do we do with them <laughs> is that a whole thing anyways moving on more image i think this is my last uh, image book yeah this is versus versus Volume 1 by Ivan Brandon and of course Asad Rabik, which is the reason you get uh, versus. Uh, I think I've read, did Brandon do, um, I remember reading a, two volumes of a, of a book by Brandon and now I can't remember. But I was not a fan of, of his story in that one. And in this one, I have to say, the story kind of falls flat, but the art is fantastic. If you haven't read uh, Asad Rubik's uh, work on uh, Thor, he did a couple runs with uh, Jason Aaron on Thor, which was uh, pretty amazing stuff. And here it's it's still it's amazing. For some reason, it, the art looked kind of dark spots for me I'm not sure why but like I said the story is uh it's not that great you have this guy who is a uh, kind of a war hero and he's basically fighting in some kind of a media war which the whole purpose of it is just to be broadcast and for the masses and you know and it's uh it's done it's been done before I think and like I said the cyber big art super fantastic great stuff and that's basically my haul there i did of course uh pick up three more volumes these are in spanish 
first time I pick up graphic novels in Espanol. I was doing some research and this series is no longer being licensed in English for some reason. And that would be Last Man by Balak, Sanabile, and Vives. I picked up 7, 8, and 9, which is a continuation of the series. This was being published by um, by First Second Books. And here's the, here's the last volume that First Second Books uh, put out. So, quick comparison. First Second Books is a little bit taller. But they look a lot. They look pretty much the same, of course, uh, like most uh, European publications. This has a, a dust jacket. So, there's that. But other than that, I mean, they're pretty much the same. This one doesn't have the dust jacket because I'm currently on volume 8. It does feel like there's more uh, sex and graphic adult stuff in this in the series. I'm not sure if that's a reason... Uh, if that's a reason for second books decided to drop it. This is uh, published by uh, by Diablo Editions in uh, Spain. And uh, cool enough, you even get some uh, color pages in the beginning. Heck, you even get stickers in the back for some reason. I don't know <laughs> why uh, they're doing that. And I think volume volume nine is the last the last thing they've uh, published. I think the French edition is, is up to uh, 10 uh, albums. I'm saying albums now for some reason. <laughs> this is the ninth. It's pretty close to what is currently being released. And I have to say it was great, you know, getting back to the characters. If you never read, read Last Man, I highly suggest you check it out. It's a lot of fun. It kind of feels like a manga, but doesn't feel like a manga. And maybe if more people go ahead and, and look it up, maybe for a second we'll bring it back. That was my haul for September and October for graphic novels. And if you stuck through this long video, thank you very much for watching.